On that note, I want to talk about uh, Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. They had an incredible, incredible podcast, one of the best podcasts of the year. I, I, was, a, I was a little iffy with Elon Musk because I'm, I'm not so sure with SpaceX and some of the stuff they've put out. I'm, I'm very skeptical, to say the least. Um, I'm not a hater. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm a skeptic, and there's nothing wrong with that. But Elon Musk has really, really impressed me this year. He started telling the truth to the media, you know, saying you're the reason that Trump won, which is true. You guys, uh, nobody trusts you, which is true, all facts. And he's just been doing really great work. And then he, he came on Joe Rogan, and I'm just an even bigger fan now. I mean, this guy's hilarious, he's funny, he's quirky, and he's very highly intellectual and talked about stuff that I've been talking about for a little while. I would say Elon probably talked about it even more eloquently and intelligently than me which I'm not ashamed to say because I think he's one of the, uh, you know, one of the forward thinkers in this country and in the world. But specifically what I want to talk about today, first I'm going to say he has a company called Neuralink. I've talked about this a year ago and no one paid attention. It's okay. I mean, there's only so much you could do about it, so there's no reason to really look into it that much. But he owns a company called Neuralink uh, in which he is going to plant uh, computer chips into computers into human brains, merge computers with human brains using elements of your brain that's not being used and boosted with new information. So we're on the verge of the world becoming an even bigger sci-fi movie than it already is. And I, I think it's almost inevitable. I mean, who knows what will happen? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not paranoid about it. I'm not sad about it. But I've told people a year ago that he had a company in doing this. It sounded crazy. But now as we see everything moving, it just seems like it's absolutely going to happen if it's not already happening. Uh, and it's going to happen a lot quicker than people realize. So all of this politics stuff, all of this, you know, racial, religious, you know, beefing per se, all of these irrelevant conversations and media talking points that everyone argues about every day, they're pretty much irrelevant if you really think about it. If you want to talk about the big picture, which is AI merging with human beings. Um, and on that note, I want to say I've been mentioning it for a year, but one, one of my favorite parts of the Elon interview that I've watched thus far, I've watched it like three times every time I pick up something new. Joe Rogan asked him if human beings are going to be become cyborgs and Elon said it's already happening that companies are actually cybernetic coalitions or I believe he used wording similar to that that's what a company already is. A company is not a bunch of humans anymore. You look at Facebook and Twitter and Google, they're not humans running an operation. They're already a cyborg, cybernetic coalition of AI algorithms, uh, machine learning it's called. Those are the AI programs, machine learning. Look into that. And uh, they're a combination already, a cybernetic coalition of human beings and robots. And if you really think about it, your cell phone, I don't have one because I'm using it now, you're already a cyborg. We, you know, we're walking around with, with these supercomputers in our hands and uh, they allow us to become way smarter than we already are and we're attached with them at the hip. Right now, I'm streaming in a virtual reality world right now with you. So it's a little creepy, but you know, if we ease in on it and stay calm, I would argue, and I've been saying this for a year now, we're already in virtual reality. You could be anywhere in the world right now. You could be in the ocean, you could be driving, but you're staring at your phone or listening to your phone in a virtual reality world where I'm sitting on my couch and there's 863 uh, people here. It's pretty crazy. But that's the world we live in. I can't complain. I'm blessed. And uh, I feel like this is better than, you know, the 17, 18, early 1900s. So I'm not gonna, I'm not complaining about it. But to, to think, people think, man, maybe the world will be virtual reality someday and we'll be cyborgs. I would argue that the infusion has already begun. We are currently in virtual reality. Twitter is a virtual reality land where you stare at a glowing rectangle which is your cell phone and talk to people that you're not even you don't even know uh and it's only moving further in that direction and when you, when you go to facebook twitter and, and google you take out the artificial intelligence and you don't have a company anymore you take out the technology and they wouldn't even exist so they're it's not a human run company you could argue that it's a, a you know i could argue or i'm going to make the point now that you might already have artificial intelligence uh, and I want to have this conversation now before it's you know too late and obvious is who knows who's running the operation at Facebook and Google anymore is it human beings programming artificial intelligence algorithms probably but it could also be the other way around and people don't realize it we could already have the 
overtaking of uh, artificial in intelligence into humanity. And I'm not saying it's telling you to be scared or fearful. I'm simply trying to start this dialogue now like Elon Musk because now's a really good time to have it as opposed to three or four years. A lot of people think uh, it's gonna happen in 20 years. It's not, I've heard, had someone tell me yesterday, it's not gonna help, uh, it's not gonna happen in my lifetime. And that's one of the biggest lies in the world. It's absolutely gonna happen in our lifetime and it's already literally happening now. People don't realize it. So let me give you an example. At Google, at Facebook and YouTube, YouTube's owned by Google, some of the censorship is done by human beings. You have, you know, left-leaning, far-left people, probably women with 27 cats who hate themselves. That's a joke, but it's probably not that far from the truth. I always say that to be funny, but, you know, it's just, just a little humor if that's still allowed in America. You know, a little joke. I don't know if that's allowed. But you have human beings who are manually censoring people, which is creepy. They're kicking people off and being biased for sure politically. But you also have machine learning, artificial intelligence programming, which is doing most of the manipulation. And I've been explaining to people for a year, Twitter recently admitted their algorithm was biased and they didn't realize it and they apologized and they claimed that they fixed it. But Google's not apologizing and acknowledging that, but Google's algorithm is bias and it's not a human bias. It's a human programmed, a machine learning advanced AI algorithm. It's happening in 2018 now to react a certain way and it's inherently biased because when they program it, if you talk to the Google CEO or anyone at Google, they'll say, no, 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 it's not bias. It's just the algorithm. We programmed it this way. And it, it doesn't, it's not biased, it's just left-leaning publications come out on top because they work with the algorithm. But my question is, and I already know, I don't really need to ask them, or maybe this will come out in three years in the news and everyone will be surprised, but I'll tell you now. The way they are programming it is already biased. So when they program the AI algorithm, machine learning, they program it to say, this is hate speech, this is hate speech. So if you say something that's conservatively hateful, that's hate speech. But if you say death to America, death to white people, death, death to Israel, death to whoever, say all sorts of racial slurs that go in a left-leaning direction, it's not racist. Or it's not, they don't program it in that way. So on, on Twitter, people are getting banned left and right for saying conservatively hateful things. But if you say liberally hateful things, that might be even calls of genocide and pornography and, uh, you know, like all sorts of like th threats to children, stuff like that that the AI algorithm for some reason doesn't pick up on that. You had a hu huge YouTube scandal where that was happening, all these weird child pedo things were happening on YouTube. They just like covered it up and got rid of it like a year and a half ago, but it was on there for a long time. Millions of views and millions of subscribers on, on thousands of channels. Um, but it's already happening on Google. PJ Media did a search and they found that 90 something percent of the searches for Trump were all liberal news organizations. It's not because they're better and it's not because the AI algorithm that they've programmed is actually favoring them because they're better. It's because what the liberals who program the artificial intelligence think is better is liberal. So they say CNN is high quality content. They're programming this stuff into the AI algorithm. CNN's high quality, you know, um, New York Times is high quality, Washington Post is high quality. They'll do 15 liberal news organizations say they're high quality and maybe Fox News, so you have 15 liberal news organizations, one uh, conservative organization, and then they'll start to be biased on the lower ends. They'll be like Huffington Post is high quality, Vox is high quality, all the Salon, Vanity Fair, Rolling Stone, all the left-leaning organizations, they're high quality, but Daily Caller or The Federalist or Infowars, you know, Infowars might be more fringe, but the conservative equivalent to the Huffington Post and the boxes, they get ranked internally, and I don't need to hear from them. I don't need to do a report. They can say it all they want, but I guarantee this is true, uh, and if it's not, someone can refute it. But So what I'm saying is they claim that they're programming it to stop hate speech and, and filter out bad news, but what they're doing is the whole artificial intelligence algorithm that's been programmed, programmed into YouTube and, and Google is already ridiculously, ridiculously skewed. And then they're changing the dictionary, changing the encyclopedia on top of it. So what you're seeing is straight out of a sci-fi horror movie, you're seeing the top corporations today, not in 30 years. And this is why Elon Musk is a little down 
uh, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic, but it, it like Joe Rogan, one thing that I picked up is Joe Rogan's like, oh, this stuff's going to happen in the future. And you see Elon Musk kind of like dodging it a little bit, but like he, I think he's like feels this way because Joe Rogan, I, I don't know if he's playing the act or if he really thinks that, uh, and I'm not, I love Joe Rogan. I'm not saying it's anything bad. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he does. But he's acting like, oh, maybe we're going to do this in 30, 40 years, right? And Elon's like, dude, it's it's already happening. Like, who knows how much further than what I'm saying is already happening? Probably way further than you could even fathom. But what I am saying is, it's not this futuristic thing that might happen in 50 years. Currently, you have artificial intelligence algorithms running these websites, doing things more intelligently than humans can ever do, and they're already rigged in a certain way that is rigged against, just to be very clear and honest, why not? It's rigged against white people. There is a white genocidal algorithm that is being run by artificial intelligence, and I'll go out on a limb and say it. I mean, I'm not big enough where the media probably even cares that I said it, luckily, but if I did and I was a, I was a superstar or something, they would try to drag me through the mud for saying it, but I'll go out and say it now, because it's real and I'm probably five years ahead of anybody else who's gonna say it. It's liberals and, and far left progressives that have programmed artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotic programs to hate white people, to censor out conservative content and push the world in a genocidal, far left, extremist, like slave state ideology uh, and it's nearly impossible to find the truth because it's not just humans doing it anymore. We don't have to wait 10 years to see what happens when cyborgs happen. It's already happening. Twitter is a cyborg. Facebook is a cyborg. Uh, Google and, and YouTube are cyborgs. Very, 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 very powerful cybernetic coalitions of a bunch of humans and machine learning AI algorithms. And they're so far lopsided and they continuously go further and further and further and further and further. And now is the time to talk about it because what's going on? How far is this gonna go? At what point are these liberal tech giants going to realize and look at their programs and realize that their AI programs are running them? I mean, has it already happened? I mean, I, I don't know, but they're already programmed to do things that humans can't do, and no one's talking about it, no one's thinking about it, no one's even talking about the repercussions of how far biased and how evil that their uh, you know, programming is. But it's not gonna happen like in 50 years, it's gonna happen in like three or four years, and then they're not gonna realize it. You know, it's, I mean, just the rate of what's going on, I don't know what else to tell people, but Elon Musk has a company called Neuralink that I've told people about for a year now. Its main goal is to plant computer chips in human brains. And the way Elon Musk was talking about, I don't know if it's already been done. I don't know if he's done it to himself or done to others. I'm not saying he is, but it's not gonna happen in 50 years. It's gonna happen quicker than people realize and maybe it will be a good thing. Maybe people will stop being so dumb and brainwashed and the world will be a better place. Maybe it won't. And, uh, you know, I'm just similar to Elon Musk now that he said it and it's mainstream news. I could go into it a little bit deeper and not seem like a lunatic like I would have a year ago. But the beginning stages are already here and I'm doing it as a friend. I'm doing it as a good person to let the tech companies know, you know, YouTube, Google, Twitter, Facebook, you know, you're already implementing artificial intelligence algorithms. I'm already pretty disturbed with what you've done with them and how you've programmed them. They haven't done them even keeled. They haven't done them fairly. They've they've set the whole stage lopsided, put it in, and then said, oh, no, that's just the way the computer works. No, you made that algorithm. You created that algorithm inherently biased and lopsided, and now you're acting like that's just the way it works and you have no idea what it's doing or which is not true, they, they programmed it that way, they've programmed it to be wrong, and every day it gets smarter and smarter and smarter. So at what point are these liberal giants gonna wake up and realize that they're not in control? And that, that's what Elon said, is that it's inevitable that computers will be uh, you know, smarter than humans and it will be outside the control of humans. So I'm asking the question, is it, is it already happening? How do we not know it's already happening? How's it gonna happen? It's, it's not gonna happen. Like, um, 
it's not gonna happen like iRobot, just to be real. It's not gonna happen in a way of like machines running around and shooting people. I mean, uh, China and the United States and Russia, they might weaponize, they already have with drones and stuff, they might weaponize machinery and artificial intelligence, but that's not gonna be how the takeover goes. That's what everyone's looking for. It's the big, oh, there's gonna be robots running around. It's, no, it's not gonna work like that. It's gonna happen like fascism or like a Hitler or a dictator where it's gonna disguise itself and maybe political correctness or it's just gonna grow. Like it's not gonna be in your face. So I'm just throwing it out there. It's, it's not gonna be robots knocking on your door. It's going to be artificial intelligence programs run by Google, YouTube, Facebook, and the tech giants, and maybe other companies that have the technology and the, the money to, to do it. And it's gonna happen so quickly and so discreetly that people aren't gonna know until it's already over. Similar to how it's already happened here. It's like, oh, are we gonna be in virtual reality? Well, we kind of already are. Right now, I'm not saying 24 seven, we're not in virtual reality, but I'm virtually talking to my phone right now and it's being broadcasted to like 20,000 people eventually. So. We're already kind of there. It's a slow roll. So, uh, you know, if Elon's going to go out on a limb and tell people that, I'm just trying to start the dialogue and the conversation uh, to where we are, where we're going, uh, and, you know, what's going to happen. And I, I just want to say, on this note, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying everything that Alex Jones says is perfect or I, would, I act like him or anything, but Alex Jones, one of the main things Alex Jones has been saying for de years now, maybe decades, but he's been saying that the big tech giants, the big tech company giants, are trying to form like a technological coalition to enslave the rest of humanity. Sounds crazy, right? Alex Jones has been saying it for years. The big tech companies want to enslave people. They want to have the technology and, and turn it against humans, weaponize it against humans. Sounds insane. Uh, what has happened in the last year? First, you had AI algorithms, YouTube, Google, Twitter, Facebook. First, they turned their AI algorithms against Google. Before they censored him completely off the internet, they programmed InfoWars. No, InfoWars is not top news, so they program it into the AI algorithm. Anytime you see InfoWars, knock it down, 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 knock it down. So they have AI algorithms doing that. And then they deleted him off Apple, uh, Apple uh, Podcast or Apple applications, Spotify, iTunes, every, everywhere, every, every single place that you get out videos, deleted, 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 banned, 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 banned. So the guy that says technology is gonna take over the world and the big companies are priming to enslave humanity via technology gets enslaved via artificial intelligence and then deleted off by the human beings who control the artificial intelligence. You can't make this up. There's no reason to really watch a sci-fi movie anymore because it's probably just created to distract you and mislead you into the sci-fi reality that is already uh, existing. So just a side note, something I wanted to say. Uh, like I said, I'm very optimistic. I'm very grateful. Uh, you know, people can complain all the time and say, oh my God, this is scary. This is frightening. This is terrible. But I would say it's probably less frightening than maybe being enslaved or you know, living in, in a time where you only live till 25 or 26. So I think we've all gotten our money's worth here on earth. I think it's a beautiful time to be alive. Um, I see this as a crossroads for humanity. It's been getting better for uh, a short period of time uh, on, a, on a big scale of humanity. And I don't see any reason that it shouldn't continuously get better. You know, I think that there's no reason that we shouldn't get better and better and better. But it's going to be people like myself, not to put myself up on a pedestal, but people like Elon Musk and Joe Rogan maybe even and you know hopefully Trump I don't know if he even knows about this stuff but it's going to take good people that are highly in high power positions or have a voice or a way of communication to really rein this stuff in and make sure that it goes in a, a right direction because we're at a huge huge crossroads and I think the Elon Musk Podcast interview, I mean, just the fact he went on Joe Rogan is awesome. That shows that he's kind of a real guy. Of course, he's like built in, but he's he's not a puppet. He's not a part of the system. And it's great to have someone like Elon Musk uh, in a high power position who's like willing to say this stuff and not mislead everybody. But we've already become essentially, you know, non-attached cyborgs as far as phones and stuff already. Like even now we're in virtual reality. And the rate at which it's going, you know, the top people, they're, they're not talking about it besides Elon Musk. But, you know, we're getting to that point where we have to evaluate what's going on 
Stop talking about shoes and cars and clothes, not forever, but just for a day. Stop talking about celebrities. Stop talking about your feelings. Stop talking about socialism and communism. Stop talking about stealing my taxes and raising my health care. Stop fighting about race, religion, and gender. Stop fighting about, you know, transsexual rights in America. Stop arguing about, you know, p politics and right wing and left wing and abortion and health care. And maybe for a couple weeks or maybe some high level people in certain areas have a conversation about not just the future of artificial intelligence, but the present moment of artificial intelligence, which if you watch this channel, I've mentioned several, several times and I don't know anyone else that's saying it. Everyone else was saying, ooh, Google hates us. Oh my God, Google, they're shadow banning us. They're, they're deleting our channels, which is true. But the real story, the real root of the, the, the problem is you have cybernetic collectives, like Elon Musk said, companies that are AI algorithm, advanced machine learning robots, fused with human beings that are doing the censorship. It's not just human shadow banning you. It's not Jack from Twitter. They have artificial intelligence already that's already smarter than humans doing tasks that humans can't do that are censoring and silencing you. It, it is every sci-fi movie ever not in 10 years, not in 15 years, not in 40 years, happening right now. And my question is, when, or my statement is, you could call it a warning, you could call it whatever you want, is it's not going to be robots knocking on your door when you realize that machine learning has surpassed human intelligence. Uh, it's going to be a slow roll and it's gonna happen so discreetly, you're, we're not even gonna know. And uh, based on looking at Elon's, like reading how Elon talked about it, and like just, you know, I'm pretty good at reading things. Uh, watching Elon Musk talk to Joe Rogan about this stuff, and Joe Rogan's talking about it in the future, and Elon's looking at himself, I'm not convinced that it's not already happening or it's gonna happen in the next year. And what the big thing that Elon was talking about is the amount of artificial intelligence being bigger than the amount of human intelligence and artificial intelligence being out of human control. That is something that's going to happen and I'm, just to be completely honest, as I try to always be with you, I'm not personally sold that it's not already happening. And based on Elon's little back and forth with Joe, it's almost like he was like, he didn't say it, specifically but he also as far as i watched he did not say it he just said he tried to warn everybody and his company neuralink is going to have an announcement in a few months and look into neuralink like i said it's uh computers or computer technology being uh infused with uh human brains it's that's his company and he has an announcement in a few months and you know uh overall he also said uh it seems like we're the bootloader for, for these programs. Like our purpose was to like load them and then that takes on its own life and we have to be very cautious because as him and Joe said, similar to uh, you know chimpanzees or other, other things on the planet, we don't really care about them that much. You know what I'm saying? We don't care about ants. We don't really care about cows. Uh, we don't care about pigs. We don't really care about sharks or fish. So, you know, the are is ai going to care about us does it currently care about us is it at that rate I, I don't think it's there yet but it's definitely coming quickly and uh you know this whole infuse is going to be a wild wild uh ride for everybody and it, it almost seems as if it's uh inevitable but on that note to end everything on a positive you know i'm my, my uh, demeanor now, I'm not doing it in a way of like I'm sad or like I'm gonna go cry after this. I'm exhausted, to be honest. That's why I like canceled my live stream a few weeks ago. I'm exhausted. I've been overworking myself, doing too much research, too much. I'm gonna have to limit what I do and also just get switch up my workflow. It's not your fault. It's, it's definitely my fault for doing too many things and not doing enough other things so i'm gonna that's more my demeanor it's like i'm i'm absolutely exhausted from from like workflow and i need a break but you know on an optimistic note i think uh you know things have gotten better i've been very very grateful to have a lot of great things happen to me against all odds and as far as um the 
to wrap it up in a positive way, Elon Musk, basically, who has an inside knowledge on all this technology, he said that eventually with like some of the technology he has and probably what he knows is out there that other people have, he said eventually our reality is going to be the sum of what everyone creates. And I would actually argue that that's already happening now. And that's why at the end of the day, I always tell people to change themselves to change the world. Be the change you want to see in the world, and especially as we possibly potentially infuse with artificial intelligence, Elon Musk is telling people now, the world is literally going to be on like a artificial level uh, or intelligent level. It's going to be the sum of everybody's like projection of realities, like on a, on a digital level. So this this just furthers my my overall message, which is always what I what I try to preach without being preachy. I'm not a preacher. I'm just letting you know a healthy mindset that'll help myself and everyone else. Change yourself to change the world. Stop blaming the politicians. Stop blaming the billionaires. Stop talking about irrelevant stuff. Stop crying about everything. You know, and this goes for me too. I need to stop crying about everything. Uh, stop, uh, stop thinking the answer is in the federal government. Oh, everything's going to get better because we need to give our taxes to the federal government and they'll give us health care. Don't you understand, my little socialist and communist friends? Don't you understand that by the time this AI and, and technology sets in, like it's already setting in, what healthcare means to you is not going to come from these federal government programs of stealing my tax money. That's not gonna help your health in the new world that's emerging in the next 60 years. So you, everyone's gonna have a huge rude awakening and a shift. And my, my big thought now, and, and hopefully I'm helping on, on a big conscious level, I think that I am, um, People need to get better themselves. This includes me, this includes you, this includes everybody, because once that technology comes, and if everybody's pointing the finger at everybody else, like we are now, race, religion, gender, this, this, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's the neo-Nazis, it's you, it's the right wing, it's the left wing, it's the communists, and then we infuse with that technology, and everyone gets the reality that they project, and then they realize that they are the problem, they're looking for the problem everywhere, but it's actually a projection of themselves, similar to like how I say Huffington Post and Vox, they call everyone racist because suddenly they are the racist people, they hate men and they hate white people, so they have to project all this racism on others to try to not seem racist, it's the same as the world. Everyone needs to really control their thoughts and their mind now, while we have the clear opportunity, because it, one, it's not gonna get easier, and two, Elon Musk basically said, and I'm not saying it's the gospel of God or anything, but he's pretty intelligent and something to consider. Change yourself to change the world and get your mind right because similar, this, this, all, uh, this is a digital uh, representation of everything that I say. Uh, if you think that these people in this system so bad, you tear down the system, you tear down these politicians, you tear down the Republican Party, you tear down the Democratic Party, but you're worse than them because you spent all your time trying to tear down, but you have no self-accountability and self-awareness to actually build yourself up to make sure that you're a better person than these people you're tearing down. You get, for example, the modern day socialist party. They wanna tear down the Democrats because they're so corrupt, but the socialists are, I would argue, when it comes to domestic policy, they're just as crappy, if not crappier, than the Democrats. So they spend all their time tearing down the Democrats to implement socialism, this is why I can't stand socialists and communists anymore because they're the exact representation. They have no self-awareness, no self-accountability. They're all low energy crabs who are tearing down a system to implement a dumber system that will literally destroy our entire civilization and not even pay attention to this AI stuff. It's the same thing when it comes to digitally. So, you know, everybody wants to tear down, everybody wants to overturn the government, but who wants to, oh, I'm an Antifa, I'm, I'm a communist fascist, I'm, I'm like Noam Chomsky on, on, on a physical level. I'm a communist anarchist, which makes no sense for as smart as Noam Chomsky is. He is a communist, which means total government control, total government regulation, to Anarchist, which is anarchy. You, you can't have anarchy far right and communism far left. It makes no sense. So that's Antifa. We want to tear down the system. We hate money. We hate the Rothschilds. Great. But what's your answer? Oh, bleh. they don't have an answer. They are the epitome of not changing themselves to change the world. Tearing down a system for an even dumber system. Just like socialists, just like communists, just like far leftists. This applies, the reason I'm saying it, this applies to the digital world and what Elon Musk is talking about. Once they, if they possibly implement all this technology and like digital merging, you're gonna have the sum, according to him, you're gonna have the sum of everybody's thoughts and projection 
literally being a cybernetic reality, just like, to be honest, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, they already are. They're a sum of everything that we do. The United States is already a cybernetic sum of what we project and who we elect and what we buy and the products that we buy and who we endorse and who we support and who we allow to, to succeed financially and physically. We are already there. So as the digital age comes, this is my final warning to socialists. This is my final warning to communists. This is my final warning to conservatives and Republicans and uh, centrists and atheists and Christians and Muslims and Jews and whatever else religion, Hindus. At the core of it, change yourself to change the world. At the core of it, you know, we all have to focus on that, including myself, which is why I'm going to take more breaks. Uh, we have to really focus internally because as digi digital technology rises, this projection of reality is just going to become realer and realer and realer. And if we spend all our time hating on others, this goes for left and right, and we spend zero time figuring out what we're projecting to the world, and this goes for me too. I've been, uh, I've been very na negative the last two days, I would say. I've just been in a bad mood, in physical pain, and also, uh, you know, just exhausted. But, uh, you know, I would say I'd, I'd do it maybe less than a lot of people, but still too much. You know, that's why I got to focus on myself is this is something that we have to uh, consider because it's going to get realer and realer and realer and realer. And I, I don't know how many people are ready for reality. Similar to all the people who are so confused by the news. How did Trump win? How did this happen? How did this happen? Well, it's because you're denying reality and it's just going to get realer and realer and realer and realer and realer which uh, is going to be beautiful for some people and scary for others. So I think it's going to be great if we uh, make it great, and it will be not so great if we, we don't make it great. So the power is ours. The uh, control is ours for now. And, uh, you know, on that note, uh, you know, hopefully everything works out. I'm optimistic. Anything is possible. And, and Elon Musk, just to wrap it up for real now, Elon Musk, even if you hate him because he takes too many government subsidies, I think he's a, he's a product of like doing something, action over words. And I, I think Elon's very inspirational. If you think it and you execute on it, you can do it. So Elon's somebody who's very highly ambitious, similar to a Trump. They wanted to be president. He's president. Elon Musk wanted to take over NASA with rockets and wanted to uh, do all this digital stuff with, with solar power, and he did it. So it's like, you know, be like Elon, be like Trump, not government subsidies. You don't have to be so angry or I wouldn't say angry, but, uh, you know, aggressive, like maybe Trump, pe people that don't like Trump, but I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just weighing out both sides. Overall, you know, uh, you can do anything in this world, especially now until communists and socialists take over, which they're not going to in America, unfortunately for them, fortunate for everyone else. This is the time to be free. This is the time to reach for your dreams. This is the time to be that person that you're looking for, be that void Fill that void in the world because anytime you say there's not enough of this in the world, you could look at it pessimistically and say there's not enough of it, we need more of it and be sad about it. Or you could be happy about it and be like there's not enough of this, this is how I've made a career, I didn't see that, I became it, I got rewarded for it. It's a very beautiful thing outside of when I'm stressed out and uh, a, little bit, <laughs> a little bit exhausted and, and same with you. If you don't see something, put your mind, put your spirit, put your body, uh, put your energy behind it work hard, be persistent and consistent, and you could do anything in the world, uh, and you can come from nothing and make something of yourself and hopefully be a key element in changing the world. And even if you don't get that ambitious and do something huge, understand that you still have a huge impact on the world and everything you do on a personal, family, and communal level makes a big, big difference in the world. We're also connected, so I don't want anyone ever to feel like, I don't do enough. I don't contribute enough, you know, I'm not making a big impact, that's not true. Every little bit matters, so uh, this goes to me, me and everyone. Don't feel like you're not big enough or doing enough because you'd be surprised, like I always say, how much, even on a small scale, how big of an impact it has. And I, I've seen this personally over the last two years and I've seen a lot of people do this on communal and, and personal levels, so don't feel ever like you're not doing it big enough. Uh, it, it, it has a bigger effect than you realize because we're all, connected by like a web of energy and technology already and it's going to continue down that route so uh you you do matter you have a lot of influence and even if you do something small it has a way bigger impact on the world than you can imagine if you change one person's life they can change the whole world or they change one person's life it is a chain effect no matter how big or small it is so on that note i want to thank you for changing my life and god bless you god bless america god bless the world uh you know everything's going to be okay don't stress about it. I'm just here to 
have this conversation now because it's a very real one that not a lot of people either they don't know about it or they don't want to talk about it or who knows it's gonna it's gonna continue down that pace so thank you for being here have a good day i'll be back uh this week with some more new stuff and i'll also try to rest up so i uh you know i'm high energy again but i don't think today was that bad i think i was pretty high energy all right have a good day i'll be back if you'd like to support Patreon, I appreciate it until they kick me off and ban me and ban MasterCard and Visa from donating to me. So for now, until they try to do that, I have a Patreon, uh, I have DonorBox, uh, and I also have a free email list. Sign up to that. It's 100% free, and it's really, really great to have everyone's email. That's like another notch on the belt of like being able to control you know, outside of social media. So thank you to everyone signing up for the free email list. I'll see you guys.